How cool is that right there, folks? I hope you understand. This guy's going 190 miles an hour out here trying to catch the guys in front. This is something that Carl Edwards has talked to me a number of times, just wanting to give us a ride with a lap around here and, uh, and a lot of tracks. So thanks, Carl. That's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed it, fans. And wanted to bring the fans right in the cockpit. You see how he was working that steering wheel, just hanging on, almost got up in the wall, just, just cranking that wheel. Look at him. Talk about an in-race reporter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twenty-seven laps to go here at Homestead Miami Speedway. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season finale. Denny Hamlet has already had a career high three wins in 2009. He won at Pocono, Richmond, and Martinsville. This is the car he won with at Pocono and Martinsville and trying to go to victory lane for the first time at Homestead Miami Speedway. Kyle Busch is second, Jeff Burton third, Kurt Busch fourth, and Kevin Harvick now being shown in fifth position. If you're wondering about Jimmy Johnson, our points leader and the man who is chasing history right now, he is back in seventh position. Jimmy led the early lap, so he will get to his gotten the bonus points for leading twice for 28 laps. There is Jimmy Johnson. 26 laps away from making NASCAR history. Yeah, Jimmy's found a nice place to run right here. It's no, no problem at all for him to run in this spot. No cars around him. Uh, Mark Martin, on the other hand, is just digging as hard as he can. He's moved up to the 12th spot now on this uh, this run, so he is definitely, you know, trying everything he can to get every spot possible. Yeah, Jimmy's had to really work for this most of the day. I mean, he's been in the middle of a lot of battles on these restarts and things, and they're still looking at Truex and Martin. They're still just battling like crazy. Truex has been married to that top side pretty much all day. He's made it work nice for him here in this race. Like he just inked the back of his car, just inches off that wall. Whoa, man, look at that. You don't think Mark Martin's driving hard? And Mark Martin, a 27-year quest to be a NASCAR champion. He knew it was an outside chance coming here today, and it's not over yet, folks, but he wanted to come here and lead the most laps and win the race and forced Jimmy Johnson to have a good top 25 finish in order to beat him. And Mark has not led a lap thus far tonight. Run right along with Mark Martin here and what's Kyle Busch lost a lot of time that last lap. I think he could have possibly gotten into the wall in the middle of three and four. He'd been getting higher and higher on the track trying to chase Denny Hamlin down. You know, we've heard him say last night and tonight that he just can't seem to find what it takes at this track to try to make time. He searches all over and he just never really finds it. He does a great job. He's running second and he won the race last night, but that's just been his comments. Yeah, he lost a good bit of time to Jeff Burton. Check this graphic out. In all three series here, he has run enough miles to circle the globe. 24,900, one and a half miles. That's a lot of racing miles. How about the 44 car, A.J. Allmendinger? You talk about future stardom. Here's the young man who was the highest finishing Ford last week at Phoenix. He had driving a Ford for Richard Petty Motorsports, where they will be next year. He's already been the highest finishing Dodge twice this year. How about that from one season? The highest finishing make in two different manufacturers. Yeah, and he's the highest running Ford right now. You see Carl Edwards trying to catch him, but A.J. takes that spot away from Clint Boyer, so he's up to the eighth spot now. And DJ, this car was actually built by Richard Petty Motorsports people. This is an in-house car they built and uh, and put the Ford engine in. So kudos to those guys building this car just fresh out of the box. Yeah, their chassis works. So I'm sure that is something that as they move over to Rouse, they'll take a look and see if they can combine things there, make all the efforts a little bit better. I heard Carl say he was catching this group. He's now he's caught Clint Boyer. from the end car just how hard Carl was having to work with that car you can see a lot of the time he was turning back to the right as he was making the exit of the corner see if he can slide right up in front of Clint Boyer here on the exit of turn four or turn two I'm sorry whoa not quite Boyer comes roaring back there 
battle for ninth position. We do want to mention, by the way, the two car we were chastising, wondering if that was a good decision for Kurt Busch to take the two tires. And Andy, you're right. Uh, even though he lost a couple spots, he has now held his own in fourth position. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what, what they've done. I actually thought they would lose a lot more spots. I mean, they did have the lead on the restart, and they're fourth now, but their lap times are still just about equal to the leader, Denny Hamlin, right now. I actually thought it might work the reverse, that they might be okay for the first 10 or 12 laps, but then might fall off. But he's really hung on and is actually catching Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch a little bit who are running second and third. Carl Edwards goes down again, and uh, there's the 48 and 24. Jimmy Johnson being shown in sixth position. Jeff Gordon in seventh spot. You know, Jimmy Johnson's in sixth place right now. I think he's got a car that might be good enough to win the race. If uh, you get down here and have a late caution and they all come down pit road, he might pull out all the stops and try to get a win. What do you think? Well, that's possible. Still a lot of cars on the lead lap, but you know, with Mark Martin not being up there, it, it kind of does open things up for Jimmy Johnson. Show just what kind of car he does have, maybe. But it's really about the championship tonight. They have a lot of wins. And I think he'd be happy if this thing just went green the rest of the way right now. Yeah, I think he would too. Now we're going to award the Gillette in the clutch move of the night to the over the wall crew for this 48 team. They had to have a good pit stop. They had to make sure it was clean getting on and off pit road. And that's the thing they focused on all night long is just being accurate and not making any mistakes. And uh, they've done a great job tonight. They have been the fastest off pit road, although they've had a few good stops. They've been very solid, not making any mistakes. To find out how your favorite athletes prepare for success, go to ESPN.com, search Locker Room Report. Could not have a lug nut, could not have a speeding penalty, could not nice have an issue with the quick. Nice and smooth. this ride here to the end of this thing. Nice and smooth. Now there's your answer, Dale. <laughs> always, you know, I'm always shooting for the stars. Oh, I like to win the race, too. Yeah. Yeah, that would certainly be the perfect ending, but when you're chasing this kind of history, man, you just have to get yourself in the spot that he has. You've done a fantastic job, obviously, all year, but in particular under just tremendous pressure here this weekend. We talk about Jimmy, but no one, there's Chad Knauss, no one has ever won four consecutive titles as a crew chief. And if you're looking for Rick Hendrick, folks, I'll remind you that Rick Hendrick had to leave earlier today because of a family emergency. He had to go home. He could not be here tonight uh, to celebrate with his teams. See Jeff Burton on the left there has called Kyle Busch trying to take that second spot away. This battle is a little over two seconds behind our leader, Denny Hamlin who's come from 38th starting spot to possibly win this race. Jeff Burden came from 36th a week ago to finish second. And he has now taken over the second position here with just uh, 14 laps to go. Now it's looking like qualifying. There's no indicator on how he's going to race. <laughs> Both of these cars starting so far back. Yeah, especially when you get to tracks that are this wide where you have opportunities to pass. Handling really comes into play. You have a good car and a good driver. You can make that happen. Now the two car of Kurt Busch realizing if he's going to get up, be able to get up there and finish third in the points, he's got to get by some of these guys and he's got to go now. Yeah, he's looking in his mirror too and he sees that 29 car of Harvick. He's been inching in closer and closer to these guys. He'll try to get by this 18 car as quick as he can. At less than 20 points now separating Kurt Busch from Jeff Gordon, third and fourth in the chase points with 13 to go. A right, little, little brush of the wall there, Kyle Busch. And that's how close it is there. Kurt Busch trying to get up there and slot in on that Hendrick 1-2-3 finish. Kevin Harvick and the RCR guys may not pick up the win tonight, but they've got to be awfully pleased at how far this whole team has come just in the last month or month and a half, Andy. I think they need to be just pleased as they can be because this is a great performance tonight for RCR. Jeff Burton sitting there in second spot, still has a shot at it, only three seconds behind the leader. And there's Harvick and right behind him in fourth. 